Okay, so welcome in this video. As a part of this video, we will try to understand what are those good manufacturing practices requirement according to the US FDA. And we will take the support of uh, part number 211, which talks about good manufacturing practices requirement in for the finished pharmaceutical products, part 211. So this falls under uh, title number 21 and part number 211. So according to the part number 211, you will understand in case if you want to manufacture or market or sell the product in US, what good manufacturing practices needs to be followed to manufacture the pharmaceutical product. And there are different subparts within this uh, part number 211. And it goes to subpart A to subpart, uh, I think, HRJ, J or K. I'm not sure, but it's until I think K. So how many subparts are there, right? From A to K, these are the subparts, right? So in subpart A, we can understand the general provisions, general provisions, like the JMP requirements under uh, subpart A can talks about the scope. And this is about the section. This talks about the section. So this comes under 21 CFR, right? 21 CFR. And then it is part, what is the part number? It is part number 211. With the section number, section number is 1. So this you can read this particular, this is the code of this particular law. 21 CFR part 211. Uh, point one, or you can also read 21 CFR part 211 section 200.1. So what this section talks about? This regulations establish the minimum GMP standards for the participate for preparation of drug products intended for human or animal, means for veterinary. You can also follow the same guidelines, including uh, biological products also, like protein peptides, but excluding positron uh, positron emission tomography drugs so this particular drugs has excluded from the part uh, from the 21 safe part 211 as far as manufacturing is concerned All right the subpart b the next subpart is the b now and this subpart b talks about organization and the personnel let us understand this very important aspect of organization and personal. The first part of the organization uh, is the quality control unit. And this is the number of the section inside part number 211. Right? We know that the part number 211 talks about the good manufacturing practices for drug product. There is another part for good manufacturing practices for the drug substances or the drug that is a 210 so we, we are talking about the part number 211 for good manufacturing practices of the drug products like capsule pro tablets injectable etc and in the organization the first point is the quality control it is a very important component of the organizational structure so any pharmaceutical company should have the quality control unit and the requirement of the quality control unit is mentioned under section number 211.22. The quality control unit must exist, exist with authority to approve or reject all components, containers, closure, materials, packaging, labeling, and drug product. So whatever materials get tested within the laboratory, now there could be two possible outcomes. The one is material gods, uh, uh, released or material may get rejected. So who is going to take this decision? And there must be a personnel available, right? <clears throat> uh, there must be authorized personnel available to approve or reject these particular materials under the investigation or under the testing. So quality control unit must have the authority, must have the authority to approve or reject the testing material. This unit is responsible for reviewing production records to ensure 
no errors occurred or investigate the errors fully so in case if there is any investigation under progress and if quality control department feels that the manufacturing document has to be reviewed for certain reasons quality control unit has every authority to take those document and start reviewing it and you also must understand that the quality control unit is one component of your quality unit right so quality unit comprises quality control plus quality assurance i think we must have talked about this point in some of the previous videos adequate laboratory facilities must be available to this unit for testing and decision making so adequate facility for testing like what are the instruments equipment requires what are the environmental conditions required how much is the resource available at the site the number of personnel facility all that should be available and uh, a facility to take to making to make the decision on the on the sample under testing whether sample is rejected or sample is accepted maybe against the specification the specification should be available without that no one can decide whether the product is meeting the product is suitable for the consumption or not they must have the sops they must have the procedures right test procedures to conduct the testing so this is going to help them to make the decision it is responsible for approving or rejecting all procedures and specifications so quality control also approves and reviews the testing procedures and the product specification I means what should be the acceptance criteria for any given product in terms of different parameters like assay identification test related substances or dissolution etc all responsibilities and procedures of the quality control unit must be documented in writing and followed so yes of course all the procedures including sops everything should be well documented and available okay so this is the first important department as per as the organization is concerned the second important point is the personal qualification so what is the personal qualification requirement in any pharmaceutical manufacturing unit let us understand that so individuals involved in drug product manufacturing processing packaging or folding must have the necessary education training and experience i think we talked about the different types of the training including induction training on job training ongoing training you know refreshment training so all that has to be given and uh, this is required for all the people working in processing packaging holding and all other departments training should uh, be specific to their operations and include current good manufacturing practice so someone is responsible to operate rmg so that particular operator should get trained on to the rmg so their responsibility should be considered while perform while imparting the training to operators supervisors must also be suitably qualified to ensure the drug product safety identity strength quality and purity has been appropriately met there must be an adequate number of qualified personnel for each drug product means how many operators how many supervisors how many managers are required to run your manufacturing unit effectively that has to be calculated and against that you should have the sufficient manpower the next point is the personal responsibilities so personnel must wear appropriate clean clothing and protective apparel to prevent contamination it could be gowning procedures it could be wearing the gloves uh, sometimes wearing the safety glass wears or goggles according to the need of the manufacturing area especially for sterile manufacturing or like injectables manufacturing facilities the gowning procedures is is very important and it it could be 
much strict as compared to the oral solid dosage forms manufacturing unit. Good sanitation and health habits are required. Good sanitation and health habits are required. Right. Means uh, in case if you are entering into the manufacturing area, you should wash your hand with the water, with the soap, and if you may have to disinfect with the disinfecting agent, your boards, whatever you are wearing, it should also get disinfected appropriately. So microbial contamination will not take place. You have to wear the gowns and then you have to wear inside the manufacturing site. That is about the good sanitation and the health habit means what? In case if someone is not feeling well, he or she should not be entering into the manufacturing area. Or in case if someone is uh, having some contagious diseases, then that person should take the leave. So those all aspects has to be well considered and uh, well training should be provided to the operator so that you know, they will follow the systems as expected. Access to limited areas must be controlled and authorized by supervisory personnel. Access to limited areas. Now there are certain areas in the manufacturing which should not have a much disturbance to avoid the, the, the this desired standard the desired standard of that particular area. For example, if you are working into the parental manufacturing and you have the, uh, let us say class 100 area. Now class 100 area is a very sensitive area. And as compared to, let us say there is a class 1000 area. Okay. So you may have the restrictions on entering into the class 100 area and who can enter into the class 100 area and this talks about the, the number of particles below above 0.5 micrometer in, in cubic 1 cube feet 1 cube feet and if you just think about entering in this area for multiple times there may be a cross contamination possible the particulate count can may go go high and because of that this area may become unsuitable for manufacturing the sterile product so such areas must be under restrictions and only authorized personnel should be allowed to enter personnel with illness or lesions that could affect drug safety or quality should be excluded from direct contact with the drug related material until clear. So this is a very clear indication that if someone is ill, you know, should not actually come into contact with the manufacturing product. Employees must re report any health conditions that might impact the drug product. Right? That we talked about contagious disease. It may impact the drug product's quality. So the personnel should report such kind of illness so that the appropriate corrections can be taken. Now there are some facilities where the consultants are involved in the drug manufacturing. So consultants advising on drug product manufacturing, processing, packaging or holding must have adequate education. They must be appropriately trained and they must have the suitable experience so that they can guide you on to the manufacturing process. Records of consultants' qualifications and services they provide should be maintained. So who is the consultant? The consultant's firm's name, may its experience, you know, purpose of consultation, its entry and exit into the manufacturing area, right? Entry record, when he has visited the manufacturing site and the signature as and when required can be taken on to the document so that you have the proof that consultant has actually verified this process and the process has taken place in his or her process in, in his or her presence so all this is very important let us now move on to the sub part c and the sub part c talks about buildings and facilities right so the good manufacturing practices Requirements in uh, subpart C focus on to the design, construction, ment and maintenance of the buildings. Let us understand some of these important points covered under the subpart C. 
so design and construction features and this is the section what is the section number 211.42 so buildings must be suitably sized suitably sized constructed and located for easy cleaning maintenance and proper operations right see there are many common points between schedule m and this particular document also right but uh, yes of course the, the part number 211 is is quite uh, is, more, is more elaborative as compared to the schedule m but there are many commonalities you will understand if you compare this schedule m and part 11 part 211 so what is the requirement for the building suitably size the size of the building material of the construction the walls ceilings etc located for should be located for easy cleaning maintenance should be easy and should be proper oper and for uh, and should be easy for the appropriate operations adequate space is required for orderly equipment and material placement preventing mix up and the contamination so there must be a segregation possible between the different areas so that the contamination will not take place orderly equipment means what you must design the equipment flow in a such a way that the unidirectional manufacturing is possible in one direction we talk about the unidirectional flow material placement means what there must be a place available for storing the material in case of there are many in process steps going to take take place blending takes place so we are going to store the blend before and after the process or the compression of the tablets takes place in the compression area so where we are going to store the bulk product or the bulk uh, core tablets so there must be a suitable place inside the compression area available to store these compressed tablets so that is very important this, this must be available within that specific uh, area specific adequate adequately sized areas should be designated for various processes like receipt storage manufacturing processing packaging so you you should have the appropriate design of a manufacturing site you know uniflow direction that you are going to receive the material this is the material receipt area where the containers can come the store person will check the receipt and according to the receipt the material will be accepted and then they will get stored in the store your store room according to the different uh, state like is it a packaging material or oh, this is the store room we have for the packaging material if it is excipient we have the this section of the store room for storing the excipient if it is a, a, a drug substance then can be the another uh, section of the store room now once it's stored in the storage and according to the manufacturing name you have to have the manufacturing department and within the manufacturing department there could be different processes taking place that this section is for uh, dispensing or weighing of the all raw materials excipients drug substances this particular section of the manufacturing is for granulation that is for maybe the blending next is for compression to that so the section for processing is required and then finally the section for the packaging of the finished product aseptic processing aseptic means for the sterile manufacturing like injectables or ophthalmic products so aseptic processing areas need to have controlled environments controlled environments with appropriate air filtration and cleaning systems See, the environmental control is required even for the uh, non sterile uh, manufacturing area also, like temperature, humidity, cleanliness, hygienic conditions, right? But in case of the aseptic formulation, the norms for the environmental control is, is too high. Like the area should be uh, class 100 for the uh, sterile manufacturing, right? So those requirements are not for the oral, oral solid dosage forms or maybe the oral liquid dosage forms. Penicillin manufacturing must be conducted in separate facilities from other drug products. See, penicillin can be allergic to human being. And in case if you are having the non-penicillin manufacturing area, 
in that area penicillin must not be manufactured right there are many adverse effects observed even allergic this is quite allergic to many of the human beings so the penicillin should be manufactured in the separate manufacturing area so this is to mitigate the safety aspect during the manufacturing of the drug product then the lighting all areas must be uh, having the adequate lighting so intensities so that you know in case if there are any visual inspection going place in that location probably we have to have the uh, more lighting uh, capacity so that the uh, the work person working there can able to do the visual inspection appropriately and there could be areas which are very difficult very important as far as the noting the readings are concerned like weighing details observations so all those areas must be well lit ventilation air filtration heating and cooling this conductor comes under the your uh, hvac system proper ventilation and control systems for air pressure microorganisms see the air pressure is what now there is something called as a positive air pressure right positive air pressure so the positive air pressure is required in the manufacturing area and uh, it should be with the more critical uh, manufacturing location the pressure should be positive then the it is also required to man to maintain the microorganisms uh, growth or contamination to control the the dust humidity and temperature are these are the important uh, aspect of the uh, ventilation air filtration and heating air filtration systems including pre filters and particulate filters should be used with measures to control dust recirculation see this is very important point especially in case of the uh, sterile manufacturing i think we talked about hepa filters in 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 one of our early discussion so hepa filters may not be required for osts or oral uh, liquid dosage forms but hepa filters are required for the sterile manufacturing and also the separate air handling systems are required for the penicillin manufacturing as you talked about the allergic nature of the penicillin and this can be a safety concerns to the operators in case if you have the penicillin in the different manufacturing locations it should be in the different manufacturing location but i mentioned sometimes your uh, utilities like water system your hvac system may be common to this different facilities in that case if there is a penicillin manufacturing over here right then you will not be allowed to use the the, the same hvac system for penicillin and another non penicillin uh, products right so the common hvac system is not allowed the next point is the plumbing potable water must be supplied under continuous pressure complying with the this is a requirement of the us government and is epa stand for environmental protection agency standards drains should be adequately sized with air brakes or devices to prevent back siphonage sewage and refuse safe and san sanitary disposal of sewage trash and other refuse is required washing and toilet facilities adequate washing toilet facilities with hot and cold water soap air dryers towels clean toilets must be accessible to the working area so this is all requirement as per well as the sewage and the the washing and toilet facilities is concerned then come the sanitation buildings must be clean hygienic and free from pest infections means from microbial growth written procedures for sanitation including cleaning schedules methods and materials must be established and followed so how are you going to make sure that your manufacturing location is properly sanitized in that purpose you have to have the schedule defined for the sanitization morning afternoon floor sanitization when and what 
what what reagents has to be used generally two different reagents are used let us say one week detol and second week can be the savlo now this avoids the development of a, a resistance toward the product used this is in the one week and this is for the the next week so that the microorganisms will not develop a tolerance toward the cleaning agents also maintenance buildings must be maintained in good repair in case if there is any repairing required you have to keep the buildings up and running so this is the the first part of our us fda good manufacturing practices and the rest sub parts we talked about sub part a b and c in the next videos we'll also understand the rest of the sub parts in the us fda's good manufacturing practices thank you so much